Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and this is Top Fives, the only weekly top five show in snowboarding, currently. I'm sure someone's gonna bite on this trend. Anyways, this week's episode, the top five ways you could pair your bindings to your snowboard. That's right, you bought a board, you're looking at bindings, you need to know what could pair up with what board you bought. This is how you can do it. I'm not saying this is how you should do it, I'm saying this is how you could do it. Number five, it came on your board. That's right, you bought a board boot binding package, so you're all set. I don't even know why you're watching this list, but you bought that setup and you were just like, hey, it came with it, so they paired it. It must be optimal for my type of riding. You did zero, zero research on this at all. I'm ashamed of you. You make me sick. Number four, you're just gonna use your old ones. I mean, they carry over, they're not that beat, good for you. If they're like 30 years old and have some weird whack-ass hole pattern, I don't know how you're gonna make that work, but more power to you for trying and bringing them into the shop and bitching that there's nothing compatible because they're still good. Newsflash, they're not good. The thermoplastics are bad. You're probably gonna explode and die. Now there's nothing wrong with carrying forward your old bindings to your new board and I mean, Hell, you're pretty much dealing with anywhere between two and four screws to get that to work. Just make sure the plastic's solid in them, make sure they're not bent, there's nothing weird going on, that everything still works. You're good. It means you're thrifty. Take the money that you saved and buy more lift tickets and ride more. I encourage this. Riding more. Number three! Buy into blind fanboy fanaticism. That's right, your friend, your friend's friends, a whole online forum. Someone just said, hey, this is the greatest thing on earth. You did zero research because you're like, well, they liked it, so you bought it. Might not match the board, it might match the board. You don't really care because now you've joined a cult. And now that you've joined a cult, you're gonna tell everyone else that they're the greatest thing on earth. Why? Because you bought them and you don't want to admit that you bought into them on fanboyism and you don't really like them. Or maybe you do, I don't really know. I, I don't know you. You think you know me, but you don't. You don't. Number two, listen to your favorite vlogger that only promotes what's given to them. It'll be the best binding they've ever used this year. Next year, they won't even mention it at all because someone else gave them something. But it doesn't matter. It's almost like fanboy fanaticism, except this is the straight word from the cult leader. And once again, you joined another cult. People keep joining cults. I have no idea why. Do you, want to, do you want to join my cult? Swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I'll take your money and tell you that your snowboard gear sucks. Just kidding. Or am I? I don't know. I might gaslight you a little bit. I'm that kind of cult leader. Honorable mentions. All great options, but just barely didn't make it on this list. You're gonna buy the matching binding from the brand of board that you bought. Not a bad problem at all. It probably actually pairs fairly nicely with it. You're buying it only on aesthetic. You bought it because you have white boots and it's a white binding. Doesn't matter that you're a never ever rider and it's the stiffest binding on earth, you're getting it. You're buying into the marketing hype. So-and-so said it was the best thing ever and then they dumped a lot of money into advertising and targeted ads, so you're getting it. You have no clue why you're getting it, but you're getting it. And the number one way you could pick your bindings You've become an astute observationalist, done your research, checked the reviews, read the marketing. You may have even looked at them in person or at least a 360 degree photo or video of them. And now you're going to finally choose the right binding that matches your personal preference, your riding style, and the snowboard you're riding. Congratulations, you're not a mindless sheep. You haven't joined a cult. You haven't bought into marketing bullshit. I'm proud of you. Pat yourself on the back right there, big guy. Because you know what? You did a little bit of research and it paid off so that you're happier when you're snowboarding. This has been my top five ways you could buy your snowboard bindings. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Did I forget one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this list. If you're new here, 
Remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications, that way you're not missing any of these videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to join a cult, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. It's not a cult. Or is it? I don't really know. Anyways, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll continue to be your host until Randy takes over the cult. And I'll see you in another video.